Hey guys, it's Doc Hepps here. So you're having all these weird urinary symptoms. Could you have a bladder stone? Hey guys, it's Doc Hepps here. So the question is, your urologist tells you he's going to remove a part of the prostate when he goes after these bladder stones. You've got a plumbing problem. What's up with this? We're going to go over a little bit about why these bladder stones form, what the treatment options are. We're going to go over the anatomy. And finally, stay tuned at the end of the video. I'll give you my approach and how I treat gentlemen with bladder stones. So let's start with a little bit of the anatomy. This is a picture of a bladder, a normal size prostate, and the urethra. Over here, you have a bladder. You have some stones in this bladder, um, and this is a big prostate causing obstruction uh, to the bladder and to the flow of urine. Um, the urethra is integrated into the prostate, and the prostate integrates into the bladder. There is a section of what's called the prostatic urethra that's a thin layer of urethral tissue adjacent to the prostate. So, that's the basics of the anatomy, and I think you can appreciate in this uh, uh, section how the bladder can, might work quite hard against a prostate that's causing a blockage and obstruction compared to this bladder that has a nice open channel and the flow of urine may be fairly normal compared to over here where the flow of urine may be weak, starting and stopping, and different urinary symptoms that the prostate often causes. So, Let's talk about a little bit about why these stones form. So bladder stones typically are not just kidney stones that fell into the bladder and just sit there. Typically, bladder stones start and grow in the bladder. These stones form when men retain urine. So urine contains all the excess electrolytes and toxins that our body wants to get rid of. So if we have a bladder that's working hard, that's pushing as hard as it can to empty as much urine as possible, but the prostate is just obstructing it, the bladder may just poop out, and some of that urine it resides and stays within the bladder. So all those toxins and excess, excess electrolytes can form crystals and over time develop stones. So what happens is these stones form in the bladder and grow over time. They can cause uh, different urinary symptoms. They can cause symptoms that really mimic just normal enlargement because most gentlemen who retain urine will also have an enlarged prostate. So these symptoms include weak stream, poor flow, uh, sometimes getting up all the time at night, urgency, frequency. It can include recurrent urinary tract infections uh, or blood in the urine. Um, so these are symptoms that may uh, occur with uh, prostate enlargement in and of itself, but may also occur in gentlemen who have urinary stones in the bladder. So how do we figure this out? How do we diagnose uh, bladder stones? Well, typically we'll start with the usual history. We ask you how your urinary symptoms are. Um, we'll take a, a family history and ask if there's any history of prostate issues in the family. If your dad, uncle, brother has enlarged prostate and symptoms, we'll do an exam to feel the prostate. We'll also get a sense of how big or how small that prostate is. Most times we'll do a urine test called a urinalysis. We'll look for infection in blood and some other parameters. Uh, we'll check postvoid residual. And that's a ultrasound assessment of how much urine is left over in your bladder after you pee. So oftentimes we'll ask you to leave that urine sample and then a nurse will come in and use a little ultrasound that sits right below your belly button and it can tell us non-invasively how much urine is left over. Some guys can walk in and they don't even know it. They're floating around with a liter left over in their bladder. And they may not even feel it. But this is a key test to guide us. Are you one of those gentlemen who may be retaining fluid. Once we do the history, we may start with some medication to help with your urinary symptoms because 
gentlemen who come in don't necessarily tell us that they have a bladder stone. They're not going to know. We're going to have to figure this out. Most times we'll see men back within a month or so and they'll say, hey doc, those meds didn't really help me out too much. It's then when oftentimes we'll start ordering some imaging, either an ultrasound, CT scan, and an x-ray. And we may perform what's called cystoscopy, where we take a tube after we numb the urethra up and guide it up into the urethra, through the prostatic urethra, and into the bladder. And once we see what's going on, we'll be able to determine, hey, is there an enlarged prostate and are there bladder stents? We'll use that in conjunction with the CT scan or imaging to help diagnose and potentially talk about treatment options for those bladder stones. So once we diagnose these stones, how do we treat them? Well, typically these will use a scope under an anesthetic. You'll be knocked out and we use a scope, guide it up to, into the bladder. And we use a special laser to break that stone into little bits and flush it out. It's as simple as that. Once those stones are taken care of and eradicated, there is a significant chance that you might reform those stones unless the underwriting problem is taken care of. So in men who have an enlarged prostate, you can take care of the bladder stones, but if you don't take care of the prostate, those stones may just reform over time. If you're retaining urine to start off, and you take care of the stones, get rid of the stones, you may have initially improved symptoms, but you still have that enlarged prostate that's not allowing the bladder to empty. So you'll likely reform those stones over time. So your urologist may recommend, hey, we should not only take care of these stones, but in the same procedure or potentially in a separate procedure, we should open the channel so that you don't or more stones in the future. And what that means is either with medications or surgery that we would help open this prostatic channel so that the bladder can empty more effectively, you won't retain as much urine. The treatment options become, as I briefly mentioned, medications such as Flomax and Finasteride or Dutasteride to open the channel and help shrink the prostate. Uh, other options include surgery, which would be either using a laser or electricity to mechanically remove this tissue that's causing the obstruction. And lastly, there are so-called minimally invasive surgeries, either to pull the prostate tissue open or vaporize and ablate some of that tissue. Um, all these procedures and medicines have the same goal, to help your bladder empty more effectively that you don't re retain urine and you don't continue to form bladder stent. So let me tell you what my evaluation is in a gentleman who comes in with some urinary symptoms um, and potentially uh, bladder stents. So obviously we would take a good history, physical exam, check a urinalysis. We check that ultrasound called the postboid residual to see if you were retaining fluid. If you have blood in the urine, then we might perform a cystoscopy and get some imaging right away. And that would tell us what's going on if there were bladder stones. Alternatively, if you just came in with symptoms, oftentimes we start off with medication and see in four to six weeks. If those medications weren't really effective, then most times the next step would be to add on some imaging, either an ultrasound or a CT scan, and potentially perform a cystoscopy to look in the bladder to better understand what's going on. Is the prostate really big? Is it obstructing? Is there anything in the bladder, such as a stone that may be causing uh, trouble? Because I don't want to just keep throwing medicines at you and crossing my fingers. So if a stone is seen, whether on cystoscopy or imaging, then I'd recommend going ahead and taking care of these stones, using a laser to evacuate them and eradicate them, and also, we talk about trying to solve the underlying problem, which would be more likely than not taking care in some form or fashion the enlarged prostate. And this would be with either medicines or some variant of surgery. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it provided some insight into bladder stones, the prostate, the bladder, the anatomy. 
how we diagnose and treat this problem. Appreciate you subscribing to our channel and check out our other uh, videos that go over a bunch of interesting urologic topics. And remember to stay healthy and stay hydrated. Mm -hmm.